narrative are often formed in response to traumagenic circumstances. People, a, a circumstance is traumagenic when your capacity to respond is overwhelmed. Your emotional, physical, intellectual capacities are overwhelmed. That's, that produces trauma and then the actions that you take in response are the performance of trauma. In order to gain stability again, we tell stories about that trauma. Those stories get passed down. The way that we act, the way that we think, the way that we emote gets passed down often in response to trauma. In order to perpetuate those um, narratives, those trauma-based narratives, we often set up systems and make laws and structures that reinforce the narrative. A, a, a system or a law will never continue to hold resonance if it isn't inside of a narrative that people have accepted. It has to operate inside of the narrative that people have accepted, which is really interesting. We're right here, we're in this little sector of North Carolina, and I was reading Ron Rash. If you, if you don't know Ron Rash, he's a brilliant storyteller, North Carolina storyteller, and one of the books, that he, one of the novels he's written is called A World Made Straight. And he helps us to remember that he's writing about uh, North Carolina and some guys who are living, making their way in North Carolina. A couple of dozen miles south of here, a narrative that was told that organized, that people have organized their life around is the war of northern aggression and an invading occupation. A couple dozen miles east of here, people talk about a slaveholder insurrection and talk about a struggle to retain and restore the moral order of this nation. And you have to know that inside of that foundation, the rest of history looks very different. And so we live inside of narratives. Those narratives shape our lives. And those narratives, in some instances, are coming back because they've never been resolved. They're coming back to haunt us. So it gets, what gets passed down is the legacy, the stories, the folklore, the mythology, the lives. They call that legacy. But then there's also the aftermath, the structural stuff. You think about the rubble and all of those kinds of things. And so legacy and aftermath go together. And if you don't unpack them both, if you stop telling the story but the structures still remain, then you'll have the same outcome. If you break down the structures but you still believe the story, you'll just create new structures to support this old story. Which is why in 1867, um, 70% of all industry in the United States, in the southern United States, was built on a, a model of uncompensated labor. And so when they created, after emancipation, when we pinned the 13th Amendment that all badges and incidents of slavery shall be abolished, should have been a period there. But instead of putting a period there, we put a comma which said, except under terms of lawful imprisonment, which then means that as long as we can put them in jail first, we can enslave them, which means that the economies can continue to operate, which was part of the foundational practice of Reconstruction, which allows us even today to not notice, because it's background, it's artwork, it's not even investigated anymore, that 65% of all working age black and brown bodied men in these cases, in these United States, are under the control of the penal system because it's always been that way because the story didn't change and when we stopped telling the story the systems had already been put in place to make it so.